Okay. So in the previous study, we discussed about the elongation, right? And we discussed how the mechanism of elongation takes place. But ultimately what happens is that the ribosome encounters somewhere in the mRNA the stop codon, right? And that stop codon is actually the one which signals ribosome to stop elongating or producing the long chain of peptides. And therefore, termination basically means halting of the growing peptide. But, you know, in a very simple way, what is termination? Termin termination basically means removal of the peptide. Along with that, removal or the disassembly of all the components that were used during transmission. Okay? And what else we need to understand in termination is that like elongation, okay, like in elongation, the termination in prokaryotes and eukaryotes is also pretty much the same, except for that, uh, you know, certain points we have to remember is that, you know, the stop codons, uh, in case of prokaryotes, the stop codons like UA, UAG are recognized by a termination release factor RF1. And uh, stop codons like UAA, UGA is recognized by RF2, okay? And you can also see the difference that RF1 is GTP, uh, GTP is protein, while RF2 is GTP is protein, okay? And uh, both of these mimics TRNA. So what this means? This means that, you know, when the ribosome encounters a stop codon, let's say this is our mRNA in case of prokaryotes, okay? And we know this is mRNA because sign alder sequence is added over there. Okay? So if we if let's say this ribosome encounters a stop codon, then we know that even in my previous study I have said uh, in my video I have said that there is no such TRNA which can interact with the stop codon. Okay, and there is no such amino acid which can be transported by such TRNA in the stop codon. So what happens now? We know ribosome cannot move forward, but what happens? Obviously, the stop codon side, that is A side for now, will be empty. But now what happens is that once A side is empty, tRNA, tRNA mimicking or tRNA uh, like structures, that is, termination factors like RF1 or RF2, can enter into the stop codon depending upon what is the stop codon. For example, like I said, if it is UA, UAG, it would be RF1 would enter. If it is UA, UGA, then it would be RF2 would enter into the A side in order to terminate. Now, uh, for example, to just say, let's just say RF1 enters into the A side. So when it enters, one RF1 has a domain which interacts with the codon in the mRNA, uh, the stop codon, but it also has a domain at the end around the 3' end it has a peptidase domain. Okay, a scissor-like structure you see is a peptidase domain of this tRNA, I mean this uh, RF1, which can hydrolyze the ester bone. Okay, in the P side you can see there is this tRNA which is carrying a long chain of peptide which was synthesized through whole this process, right? And now this peptidase domain of RF1 cleaves the ester bone, okay, hydrolyzes the ester bone with the help of quantum molecule, okay? As it hydrolyzes it, the polypeptide is removed. You see? The polypeptide, which is a long chain, is removed, okay? But what we have to also understand is that this peptide is, as it hydrolyzes the ester bone, the peptidyl transferase helps to transfer this long peptide into the water molecule, I mean, to the water molecule. Therefore, in this way, your polypeptide is removed, and after this is done, now RF2, which is a GDP carrying protein, or GD, GD, it is also a GDP base, but it carries GDP. So when it comes here, now what happens is that when RF1 tries to remove out of the stop codon, and when there is a breakage of interaction, the energy released will be absorbed by the GDP and will be converted into GTP, okay? While GTP of RF1, 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 RF1 was used for uh, peptidase, for the hydrolysis of the 
system work. Okay. Now, once R1 and R2 are removed, what will happen is that the site is empty. Okay. Now, we need to understand what is left. 50S, 30S and 50 RNA are remaining, right? So this needs to be removed. What removes that? This site was empty. So it is RRN, which is ribosomal or ribosome recycling factors, which enters into this stop codon. Okay? It is this stop codon which sends signals to few factors which can dissociate all of them. And these are initiation factor 3 and initiation factor 1. Okay? So initiation factor 3 we know is an anti-association factor. And as this anti-association factor has affinity with the A of, with this side, with A side of the small ribosomal survey, we know it attaches here and it tries to dissociate the large survey. Okay? And so and uh, the same will be done by F initiation factor one. So these are the these are uh, these come into the mRNA only after the ribosome recycle factor sends its signal. Along with that, you know the activity of ribosome is RRN is actually stimulated by RF2, that is ribosome release factor 3. Okay, now almost what happens is that 50 years and 30 years are already you know destabilized because of IF3 and IF1. Okay, because they are trying to attach it. Now, along with that, elongation factor G, we know what it does with the help of GTP, it allows your ribosome to move ahead one photo, right? So as the GTP hybridizes, a certain movement of ribosome, which already is weak enough due to these factors, will now, with the hybridization of GTP, is not disassembled. That means all of these things will remove. Now here you can see the last subunit, it is removed, a small subunit, it is removed, and like I said, the initiation factors like 3 and 1 are blocking E side, A side, right? And also it is repelling, this factor is repelling your 50s. So these will be recycled for the initiation of a uh, translation in the uh, in other uh, for other MRI. And now what we can see is this MRI. TRN, these are also removed. So, as a whole, components are removed. Now, if you look at the eukaryotes, you see almost everything is same except for what happens is that here in eukaryotes there is no RF2. Okay, there is no RF2. There is only RF1, and which recognizes all these stop photons. Okay, so what happens is that this uh, RF1 enters. Okay, let us just try to understand here. RF1 enters into the A side and RF1 will be carried by RF2. Simply RF3 will carry RF1 to the A side and helps to dissociate this long chain of polypeptide by the same process that occurred in prokaryotes. Okay, that is, uh, you know, this peptidase domain of RF1. It is the same process, so this will be removed. And, uh, and then RF3 and RF1 will also remove. And ultimately, again the same step. Here, in the case of eukaryotes, the step is not clearly understood. Okay, so the ribosome will come over and will try to clean everything. So for now, I will say this much that in eukaryotes, ribosome recycling factor will come and dissociate all the components because this step is not well understood in case of eukaryotes. Okay, so this was the